everyone welcome to my channel today I'm Tara with piece of Tara artistry thank you for joining me so today I am going to be doing a pearl pour and then some structural or textured art over top of it um, in parts so uh, I am sorry I've been kind of MIA lately um, I just got back from Thailand uh, my husband and I had an anniversary trip there so I had every intention of getting these videos out before I left, but life got busy and so I didn't and I apologize for that, but um, had a great time and I'm glad to be back. So again, in this one I am doing the colored pearl cells. So all of these colors that I'm using are mixed with the colored pearl cell recipe. And I'm using um, all Tri-Art liquid paints mix today. Um, I have found that I really, really like these paints a lot when I'm doing pearl cells. They seem, because of the pigment load, they seem to hold up really well with the satin enamel. And I don't get the real chalkiness that sometimes you get with a pearl pour so and that is why I'm using them all plus it's so easy to mix those so the, the way that I have these layered today I um, am able to get like peacock pearls which is kind of like a, a color and a color and a color in the pearls and you'll see that in the dried results I did get a few so um, I did have to tilt off quite a bit of this base uh, to uh, get the, the effects that I wanted. Uh, so I feel like I could have gotten more peacock pearls if I had put less paint on, but of course I always over put more paint on than is necessary. Um, so yeah, another thing to work on. But yeah, so this is my base. I'm just basically um, swirling it around, trying to make those colors kind of um, flow over top of one another and get my base coat to where uh, it isn't too much uh, paint on the canvas so that I have to dump too much of it off and I don't get the the peacock pearl so I hope that makes sense to you guys I'm out of practice on these voice voiceovers so I just put on the Amsterdam titanium white and it is just mixed with Golden Gack 800 and Floetrol I use a 50 50 50 mix of Gack 800 and Floetrol as my pouring medium mixed with uh, the paint and then water to thin it down to the consistency of very thin where it doesn't leave a trace in the cup. So here I am just tilting this uh, back and forth uh, so that I make sure that I get pearls all the way through on all sides. And here is the time lapse for this. It I did let it sit here for uh, maybe like 15 minutes and then I moved it aside so you'll see that it has less white in it here in the dried results because I moved it aside to work on something else so there are the peacock pearls you get multiple colors in there uh, this is a smaller it's a 14 inch so I didn't get as many as I wanted, but I still got quite a few and it just gives it such a unique look. So now uh, I am using, this is mesh that you get in like the screen door section or window section of Home Depot or, or Menards or Lowe's, wherever you're at. And basically what I do is I staple that edge under I curl it under and then staple it so that I get kind of an edge that uh, curls under the canvas so it, it just gives a really good 3d effect so that's what you see me doing I'm cutting this away and I'm using um, trying to get make sure that I still have uh, some 
structure in there. So I was kind of putting my hand underneath and making sure that I'm not flattening this down when I am stapling all the way around the base of that. And you can see this is a wood round. I prefer to work on the with the wood if I'm doing this type of pour because when I staple, you'll see I'm gonna staple the center uh, in some certain areas to give it more of a ripple effect. And if I don't, and not using a wood um, base or a MDF, it doesn't stay. If you try and staple in canvas, it doesn't stay uh, because it's um, not a, it's a staple gun. So the prongs in the back stay straight, if that makes sense. So you see, I just went ahead and put in like three staples just to give it a little bit more texture. And <clears throat> here you can see from the side, the texture that is going to be in this when I go ahead and put the plaster bandages over top and then the joint compound in paint mix. So here I'm just flip it over and I'm starting on the back with putting this plaster down. Basically what I do is I dip it in the water and then I take my wet paintbrush and I just smooth it over uh, so that that is, it gets smoothed down to the mesh. And then I flip it back over and I had forgotten to put my, my tape on the poured part. So this is what I'm doing now. Now this, the, the plaster and the, the plaster bandage, it, that does come off of the wood very easily. It's not like it gets really stuck on there. You can just wipe it off with a wet rag, but I just try to make sure that I'm protecting it as much as I can, uh, especially because I am going to be putting a lot of plaster down. Now I had someone ask me to show kind of a close up here. Uh, with how I do this. I basically put that plaster bandage on and I fold it under and I use my paintbrush to um, kind of st stick it underneath to make sure that the bandage is completely stuck to the mesh. And then I use my wet paintbrush to make sure that it's really um, adhered to that mesh. It, it, you'll notice that if you try this, it doesn't take much to get that to stick uh, to the mesh. So I am going to do this all the way around. I make sure I get, try to get the edges first, I think on this one. And then I filled in the rest with um, the middle section of the bandages. So I'm not gonna show you the whole thing cause it does take quite a while to do this. Um, so as soon as I uh, am done with adding these bandages, uh, you'll see it's actually starting to dry a little bit, uh, but you don't wanna add the next layer. You wanna let this sit for 24 hours. So I let this, I uh, set it aside, and now I've let it sit for 24 hours, and I have mixed together my joint compound as well as my acrylic paint together, and now I'm just Kind of slathering it on and as I slather it on I put it on and then I use a wet paintbrush to go over it because that basically will smooth it out so you don't have to do as much sanding at the end and when I'm working on bigger pieces I do this in sections but because this is such a small um, area I just went ahead and put the first layer on and then add and then went around with the wet paintbrush all the way around but it does start drying pretty quick so you, you want to make sure that you're you're you know working quickly with it if you're gonna do it do the whole thing first and you're it's a small piece, small piece now I've put on probably six layers of that and it's kind of built it up and now you see there's kind of some brush strokes but I mean not as many as if you would not have used the wet paintbrush. And now I'm just going back with my sandpaper and I'm just smoothing it over. And you can see that was a 220 sand grit. 
And here we go. This is the final result. I did just put on a white matte uh, spray paint. Uh, and you can see how that edge is kind of rolled under there. Uh, when you take the tape off every, and just take and wipe it down with some water, it looks brilliant. So there you can see those peacock pearls again. And that's it, guys. I really hope you like this one. Let me know what you think. And um, I will see you on the next one. Bye, y'all.